All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully those extra few minutes gave everyone the opportunity to join. Who's gonna join? Um, just again, um, this is gonna be recorded. So if you have to leave early or um, if there's anyone who's not able to join us live, um, you'll be able to still get all the answers to your questions posted on YouTube later. So um, welcome, I hope you're doing well. My name is Casey. I am the student development coordinator in new student programs. Um, and so I'm really excited to see so many people here. Um, I have a great group of panelists who are here to answer your questions and help welcome you to Duke. Um, I know this is a really strange time and I'm sure you've heard that about a billion times by now from a lot of different places, but um, we're glad that you're here um, and hopefully we can be helpful. So let's go around real quick um, and have the panelists introduce themselves. That way you know kind of who's here, yeah, who's, um, um, yeah, yeah where they're where from, they're from and, and, and how they can how help. They can help. And panelists, if we can, um, if we can if we mute can when we're not talking, talking, that way there's, there's not, not any sort of like echo or anything, that would be helpful. Oh, I'll call names because I realize that um, this is, that's probably easier. So according to my screen, let's start with um, Nicole. Hey everyone, um, my name is Nicole Pontecorvo and I'm the Assistant Director of New Student Programs and we're so excited to welcome you um, to Duke um, during this webinar. Thanks so much for joining us. Next is Grayson. Hi everyone, welcome to Duke. My name is Grayson. I work in the Dining Admin Office and I oversee the Student Dining Plans. All right, let's follow that with Kirsten. Hi, everybody. It's, I'm Kirsten Marinko, Marketing Manager for Duke Dining. Welcome, and we're happy to talk with you today. Awesome. Uh, next up is John. Hi, I'm John Gorsuch, and I'm representing Duke Stores, as well as the Duke Technology Center, and that's the official on-campus computer store on campus. All right, next is Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan. I work at the card office. Um, so. Trina. Hi, I'm Trina Rodriguez, and I am from the Office of Information Technology, and I look forward to meeting all of you soon. Welcome. Debbie. Oh, I think you're muted. There you go. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Debbie DiUlia from the Office of Information Technology and the Duke Card Office. Anne? Is Anne there? Oh, yeah. And if you're there, we can't quite hear you. Um, oh, there we go. I have, uh, I have two are. mutes on. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, yeah, not only Zoom, but my uh, headset. Uh, yeah, I'm just with Duke OIT. My name's Ann Roy, and we're here to help you with your technology needs. Awesome. Alexis? Hi, my name is Alexis Manhurts, and I'm the Assistant Director for Financial Aid. David. Hi, everyone. My name is David. I'm a financial aid counselor and a colleague with Alexis in financial aid. Welcome to Duke. We're so excited to have you, and we look forward to hearing your questions. Brian. Hi, everyone. I'm team lead for the Duke card office. MJ. Hi everyone, my name's MJ Williams. I work with Housing and Residence Life, specifically in housing assignments. And last but not least, Jordan. Hi everybody, my name is Jordan Hale and I'm excited to get a chance to talk with you all today 
I have the privilege of working on the new student programs team. That's why we have on our shirts today, Casey's in blue, Nicole's in white. And I'm really proud of Casey and Nicole for pulling together this panel of campus experts to talk with you all, students, parents, families, guests, everybody who's now a member of the Duke family. Uh, to get us going, I did kind of want to introduce kind of the elephant in the room and just acknowledge that um, there is a lot happening. Um, and us as a campus community, we as a campus community are thinking about that every day. Um, we are excited to answer your questions today. Questions that are specifically about things related to the fall and happening on campus, we'll do our best to address. But the truth is, um, there's still a lot that the university is working through. There's a lot of really smart people um, who are meeting and thinking about, number one, how we can keep um, our current staff healthy. Number two, um, if we're able to bring students to campus, how we can keep students um, healthy. Um, and then number three, what is the ways that we can provide for you all distinct Duke education um, that really is one of the best in the world? And so that know that those conversations are happening. They're happening in that order. Um, and we are excited to you know, not only talk today and welcome you to the Duke family, but also hopefully be able to answer some of your questions. Things specifically related to the fall though, related to the fall, we may sound like a broken record, um, but the truth is we are working through it as we speak. And so we're excited to welcome you. We welcome those questions and we're gonna give the different panelists a chance to kind of maybe talk about what they do and what their operations are, but know that um, we will do our best to answer those questions when the time is right. So thank you for being here. We're excited to see you and get a chance to answer some questions today. Awesome. Yeah, and as um, as Jordan alluded to, I think um, there's also like a caveat of things that we share today might change in an hour, tomorrow, in a month. Um, so we're going to try our best to answer questions, but just know that things are always subject to change depending on um, COVID and how it's playing out and, and what this university decides. So we'll say that, um, but but also like we're we're excited to have so many of you here we're happy to answer questions um, and help as best we can so to give a little layout of the land of how this is going to work so if you've never been on a zoom webinar before down at the bottom panel um is you should see a q a um a little q a button with like message bubbles and you can type in your, if you click on that and then type in a question, it'll be thrown to the panelists. Um, I'll be moderating. So as you type your questions, I'll be asking them aloud and then the panelists will be responding. Um, we do have a couple, also, we also have a couple of questions that folks have submitted through the Qualtrics link that we sent out um, where you can submit questions ahead of time. So I'll be pulling from those as well. Um, and also just a friendly reminder, if you're um, going to be joining any of our other webinars and want to submit questions ahead of time, that's definitely something that you can do. So we have a couple of questions that have, have popped up. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, but as you think of things, feel free to throw them in the, the Q&A box and we'll, we'll get started. So um, first question is, um, where would we find information in Duke Hub about paying tuition? I don't know who wants to take that one. Okay, so I, I will take this. I don't know exactly in Duke Hub, so that goes from the bursar's office, but if you go on to the bursar's website for Duke, there is a tab that says making payments, and it'll show you um, the different ways you can make payments, and official bills for fall semester won't come out till the end of June. Um, and so that's when you will be able to get your billing statement to show what you owe. And it's going to be due usually early in August. Great. Um, I'm not sure if there is a response for this, but I will ask it. Um, how will Duke's tuition and fees change if we're not on campus in the fall? And there might be a, we don't know that quite yet. And that's. Yeah, I, I can take that one, Casey. Yeah, I think that, I think the university will have to um, think about that. We're not totally sure right now. I know that the current fee information is posted in the Blue Book site that we have. Um, but if things do change, I, I assume there would be a pivot, but that's just something that we don't know the answer to right now. All right, we have a question about 
Duke card. Um, how do I submit my photo for my ID card? Every time I try through the my.duke website, it shows a server error. I can take that one. Um, the best thing to do would be to go to dukecard.duke.edu and there's a link there to submit your photo. And, and then if there's any trouble with that, they can, um, you can send an email to just dukecard at duke.edu and we can walk you through that if, there, if there's still issues having um, uploading your photo. Great, thank you. Um, our market, so Marketplace is the dining hall on East Campus. So there's a question about, um, oh, I totally just lost it. Are Marketplace swipes interchangeable with food points or must breakfast and dinners for freshmen be eaten at Marketplace? So maybe um, if someone from our dining team can, can talk through that a little bit. Yeah, I'll answer that. So um, the, for the breakfast and dinner swipes, they can, you can use them for meal equivalencies, but they're meant to be used at the marketplace. Awesome. Um, next question is, if the total amount of outside scholarships received exceeds the amount of money covered by loans and work study for the first year, can the scholarships be used to cover aid for subsequent years? In other words, does it roll over? So the, the short answer is no, it doesn't roll over. Um, our fi the financial aid office can only use those funds as the, the scholarship provider tells us. So if it does exceed, you need to ask the scholarship provider if they can hold the scholarship and pay it for the next academic year. If you do have a external scholarship that's going to exceed the loans and work study, I would recommend that you reach out to your financial aid counselor and they can review what options may or may not be available. We have a kind of similar question still on the same thread as scholarships. If one gets an outside scholarship and it covers work study, can it be used to cover the family contribution if the scholarship is more than the contribution even after covering work study? The, no, the outside scholarships will not reduce, ever reduce your family contribution. It will only reduce the um, loans and work study that are part of your financial aid. There's also two, there's examples on our website. Um, if you wanted to kind of see what a financial aid award looks like in an outside scholarship and how it would affect it. So you can search outside scholarship on the financial aid website. Great, thank you. Ooh, this is a good one. What is one resource either technological or otherwise, that not a lot of students know about and should take advantage of? I guess this really could be to anyone. I'll throw one out there from OIT. Um, when you come to campus, one place that you'll want to look is our software license site, which is um, software.duke.edu, and we have a lot of uh, site licenses for software that you might otherwise purchase. So you'll definitely want to check there first before you buy any software. Yeah, I, I would co-sign that. Um, and then because I've used that a lot as a Duke staff member, the other thing I would add is, um, is the mobile Duke card. I think it's a really good tool um, that can be used wherever you're going to be. And so um, I, would, I would advocate for that as where the software piece is great. You know, I've downloaded a lot of different things to help with work. And then uh, the mobile do card is also helpful. Um, whether you're here or whether you're, you know, at home, it can be a helpful tool, so. I can throw one in too. Um, I'm thinking the collabs when you do get on campus because we have 3D printers and laser printers and that's, um, and some courses there that are really nice, so. I was gonna add the Duke mobile card as well because they show you where everything at is on campus safety off. It shows you where the bus route is and things of that nature. So just that the mobile app is great. 
And that's for iPhone and Android now, right? Okay, it's on both. So there, there's the mobile Duke card, and then not to be also confused, which both with there's also Duke Mobile, and both are very good. Um, Duke Mobile is the app that you can find all those things that Trina was talking about, the bus routes, and and then there's also um, mobile Duke card, which you'll definitely want to get on your phone um, that you can access. Um, adding funds and looking at your meal plan and things like that through um, an app that you'll download onto your phone once your picture is uploaded. Any other um, advice on resources that people can take advantage of? I think one general um, resource that I've personally found very helpful, especially in the last several you know, weeks and months um, as we've moved to a virtual environment is just the OIT Office of Information and Technologies help page and the fact that they have a chat function that's very accessible, pretty easy to use and, um, and is a great way to just like ask and either about a very specific question or about um, a resource and whatnot and how to navigate it. So highly recommend using that. There was a question that came up that um, I think was a follow up to the software question. Um, can we use our net ID to access the software licenses? Oh, the chat is moving around. Uh, can we use our net ID to access the software licenses before we come to campus? Great question. And the answer is yes, you can do that. You just need to log into that site with your NetID and password. Awesome. Um, let's see. Can incoming, can incoming freshmen apply for any merit scholarships from Duke? I'll take that one. Even um, though merit scholarships don't come through the financial aid department, um, all the merit scholarships are given during the admissions process, um, and then they're maintained for the four years. Um, the only one that I know of at third party would be the Robertson scholars sometimes admit sophomores. And we have some um, department scholarships that are given to students um, in their major, but the traditional merit-based scholarships aren't available after the admissions process. All right, we have a question about, um, I realize we don't have a representative from student health here, so um, we might have to just follow up with this question. I, I, oh. I actually can answer that question. Is it about the health fee? The um, there were two. So I was actually typing in the answer of how Perfect. do you get your health fee paid for. Um, okay. So, that the blue book has the instructions of what you need to do to um, get a waiver of whether or not you need um, to have Duke Student Health. So refer to the blue book through the steps and everybody has to submit their health insurance because it's required to have adequate health insurance on Duke's campus. If you are on need, based financial aid and you are required to enroll in Duke's health insurance, you will receive a health insurance grant to cover that amount. And follow up to that, there's a question. Um, are students automatically enrolled in the student medical insurance program? If so, how does one opt out of the student medical insurance program given that they don't need it? So, um, the answer is that Duke kind of decides whether you need it or not. When you go through the process on the Duke Health website, they'll take a look at your insurance coverage and make sure that it's adequate for, in, for Durham. Um, if you do nothing, if you don't submit it, you will get automatically enrolled. So each student has to provide their health insurance card to make sure it's adequate. And the student health will decide whether or not you need to enroll in Duke Health Insurance or if the insurance you have is adequate for coverage in Durham. Thank you for that. Next question. Um, let's see. Is the, so is the price the 29, 
thousand some odd. Um, is the price listed in the blue book include tuition and mandatory fees or just tuition? Any thoughts on that? I'll pull it up now, Casey, and see if I can answer that question. I saw that question come in, so I'll pull it up and look at the blue book piece okay. and see if I can get an answer. I'll type it to the person. It's a good question, though. Okay. So, TBD on that. Um, let's see. Next question. Okay. Um, what brands of computers are supported through Duke's on-campus tech office? I can um, begin the answer to that. Um, First of all, there's recommended computers that are carried at the Duke Technology Center from Apple, Dell, and Lenovo at educational prices. Um, computing is supported through the OIT help desk at the link uh, located in Perkins Library. And uh, we, uh, the store, work very closely with the OIT help desk to support um, computing on campus and students' computers. If you happen to have bought one of those uh, three computers elsewhere, uh, we also offer computer repair, uh, authorized uh, computer repair for Apple, Dell, and Lenovo. Uh, so we try to make a complete solution for, uh, uh, for students coming here. And then I also want to mention that uh, if you do buy your computer from the Duke Technology Center, uh, we supply loaners at the OIT help desk so that if your computer needs serviced, you can have a loaner and not be without a computer. Um, we had a question about, so kind of along that same vein, um, there's, and you might've just touched on it. So it says, is it preferred to use a computer bought from, the, um, from OIT or can we just use our personal computers as long as they meet necessary requirements? Um, I'll expand on that a little bit more. Uh, as I said earlier, if you already own a computer that is very adequate and can function well on campus, then if it happens to be one of those three brands, uh, our repair center can help you if it needs service, but then the OIT help desk uh, uh, does support computing on campus uh, for what you do bring here. Awesome. And there was um, another question that asked about um, Pratt specifically. So does Pratt have specific computer recommendations? Um, I'm not sure if you have any insight on that. Um, Pratt does not have uh, officially have recommendations, but we do encourage engineering students to actually go over to Pratt or contact someone there and uh, ask them what they would recommend. Uh, it is uh, probably better if they get a Dell or Lenovo versus an Apple, but then there's people that really like their Mac and it would be best before you make the final decision to buy a Mac that you talk to Pratt first. When in doubt, it's always good to check. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Is printing free? Um, each student receives an e-print allocation um, each semester, so it technically is free. And if you go through that, you can um, request more funds. But there's um, e-print stations throughout campus where you can send your print jobs and then go and release them with um, your Duke card. And you have an allocated um, amount of, of money to use at each, um, each semester. There's a question about um, Google Drive versus Microsoft Office. So does Duke provide access to Google Drive accounts? Um, and then there's a statement of, I think most of us would prefer to use that over Microsoft Office. Um, so maybe a response to that and then maybe a reasoning. Um, right now, um, we actually use Box. Um, I can get a little more information um, on that, but because but we we provide box accounts to everyone on campus. Um, 
And then we also do have, um, we use Outlook and for Duke Mail. So we do use some Microsoft products as well. I just wanted to jump in there too yeah. with Debbie and say, I tend to be a Google fan, um, but I have loved the different tools that we have available in our Microsoft suite. So before starting to work here, and even since I've been here, I was a fan of Google Drive and Google Docs and things, but you can do all of that through Microsoft the the way our, our portal is set up what's also nice about it is it's password protected with your duke um unique your, your duke um, email and password and so then that way if you want to share anything with your peers or with other faculty or students or staff here it's all right there and so it's been really easy to use and i've really taken advantage of it now with everything that's been happening in a virtual space like it's been a really good way to communicate effectively quickly and know that it's all going to be in the same place so you know the google pieces are still there but the, but the microsoft tools that we have are, are pretty robust and our team at oit does a good job with that so that's a good shout out <laughs> Um, so next question, um, how, ac how accessible are mental health services for international students in terms of counseling, therapy, medication, et cetera? And is there a significant cost for using these services? Yeah, so I wanted to answer this one. And we don't have a, um, any, anyone from our student uh, health team here or from, from the team in Do Well. That's what our wellness services are called. But uh, I would say they're incredibly accessible, working a lot with that team. Um, they do an incredible job of connecting with students, whether it's for mental health support, a lot of prevention work goes into the work that they do. So they try to give you tools to um, kind of help yourself breathe, think through things before you get to a place where you need to reach out to counseling and psychological services. But if you do, the CAPS team is here and available to help. Uh, we have a beautiful um, space where that can take place, but they're also doing a lot virtually now um, to connect with students via telehealth. So those pieces are certainly available. I don't know um, specific information about the cost. I know we had a question earlier about um, insurance and making sure the insurance is compliant to help with those different costs. So um, if your insurance meets those needs, and then that'll be um, able to, to happen in a way that's cost effective. But I know that the team is, they do really good work. And I think I wanna shout out the prevention pieces that they do, because I think that's what's most important. They try to give students, parents, families, everyone tools kind of that they can use beforehand um, and then if you need the support that's provided by caps um, they can make sure that's available there's also a really robust um, website for a new initiative through caps and our student wellness center called blue devil care um, and any full-time or part-time undergraduate graduate or professional student could take advantage of that and they have services like talk now where you can access 24 7 mental health support or scheduled counseling um, and um, yes and so on the you can visit the um, website it's blue devil devils care .duke .edu, and um, and register for the service or learn more so Great. There were, sorry, every time someone types a question, my whole chat just like goes berserk and moves around a lot. So um, apologies. Let's see. Uh, is there only one dining plan for freshmen and how do you enroll in it? Um, yes, there is only one dining plan for first year students. It's Plan I, and they and they are automatically enrolled in it once they confirm their housing selection. Great, thank you. And just a um, quick comment to the panelists, real quick. If there is a question that hasn't been asked, um, can we? prefer to answer them live that way other students are getting that answer because it might be a common like it might be a question that other people have um, before typing an answer because then it dismisses and um, we definitely want to share that information out to everybody so quick note um, all right next question is the checklist on the my.duke site the best place to keep track of things we need to do before the fall semester um, yes the site is awesome yeah. the team worked really hard to build it go in there, check it out. Between that and the blue book that duke.edu, um, that's where the most accurate up-to-date information is gonna be for incoming first-year students. We're checking those pieces daily. 
Um, there's also going to be, um, we you know we got excited and sent a message out um, on Tuesday from our office. Um, we're going to send weekly updates, probably starting again in early June. And so between those three places, you'll be getting the most up-to-date information in addition to social media and things to kind of get what you need. But the checklist is the place to start. Good job, OIT. Thank you for helping us put that together. And just a quick note, so the blue book is different. So in the past, it was a physical, um, a physical book that was mailed out. And this year, we have made the transition to digital. Um, so there's a lot of really great, great information in there, a lot of really helpful links that will automatically connect you with where you need to go. So um, shout out to Jordan and, and the rest of his team for, um, for getting that up and running. So very, very helpful. Um, next question is about the FOCUS program. So um, will students who have been accepted to a FOCUS cluster have to reapply next year if they decide to take a gap year? I'm not sure who best. Really good is. question. Um, our team from FOCUS isn't here, uh, but we will ask that question of them. Matter of fact, while we're here on this chat, I'll message um, the leadership team of that group. And if we can get an answer, we'll reply to it as quickly as we can. Um, but that, that's a really good question. Great. Um, all right, if I need to report a change of address, where can I do that? I think you can do it through your, um, through your Duke Student Hub portal. I, I think it's through, um, I want to say it's dukehub.duke.edu. You can edit your personal information in there and update your address to the most accurate address. And I believe that information might be in the Blue Book um, in the registration section on one of the early tabs or on the Blue Book website um, that describes how you can do that. I think it's step one. Um, I think you go to dukehub.duke.edu and you can update that information. If, yeah. And also, side note, that also is the space where um, you can update, like, contact information. If you have parents or family members who you want to um, be updated with what's going on at Duke, that's how you can um, keep them in the loop as well. Um, and then there's also a space, there should be a space in that same place where you can like sign up for Duke alerts, um, which is also helpful. So it'll, it'll text you if something is happening or if there's some sort of update, um, it'll send it straight to your phone or your email, whatever you select. So. Um, let's see. I have a question about, I'm trying to go back and forth between uh, the people who submitted questions early too, because I want to make sure we get those addressed. Um, are we allowed to bring food outside of the dining hall or must we keep the food contained to the hall we got it from? Does that make sense? Can, you, can they elaborate more on that question? Well, that was, an, that was an early submission question. So I'm not sure if that person is, is in here. I would assume it means like, are you able to, if you're in Marketplace, are you able to like take food out? Um, oh yeah, you're, so what, I mean, so once you are in Marketplace for your breakfast and dinner swipes, you're not allowed to take food out. But um, once you're, if you go in there for lunch, you can use food points at Marketplace and that food you can carry out. But um, the all you care to eat for breakfast and dinner and brunch on the weekends, you cannot take out of the marketplace. Thank you. Um, let's see. And yes, marketplace, there's a question that just came up about is marketplace on East campus? Yes, marketplace is the, um, is the dining facility on East campus. There's also the cafe underneath um, and some study spaces upstairs so it's pretty it's a pretty lively spot um, there's some admissions questions I'm not sure if we have the responses to that um, but I'll throw it out to the panelists and see if anyone is aware um, when is the latest we can decide to defer admission to next year does anyone know of that date yeah, so we've been doing a bunch of digging on the back end here. Um, okay. So it is June 15th. So apologies for any confusion in the chat. 
Um, I am not sure to the question about if that deadline will be extended. Um, so my best advice would be to reach out to the Office of Undergraduate Admissions directly um, and ask about any flexibility with that. But as far as their website, um, and I've received confirmation from um, one of the associate um, directors, it is June 15th for the non-funded program. Um, and then the funded gap year program is currently on hold just due to budgetary constraints. It's not, it's not occurring at the moment. So that is the most up-to-date info. Mm -hmm. Next question is, where can I find nutritional information about the dining options? Are labels posted in Marketplace? Yes, um, we do have labels posted in Marketplace that um, go into detail about the um, big eight allergens, but also we just launched a new site and it's Net Nutrition, and we have a lot of our dining options on there as well. Um, we're still working diligently um, with our nutrition folks, but um, so a lot of the nutrition, nutritional information can be found there that goes more into detail about um, what, what all you're eating. I know about that. Yeah. Can I jump in really quick? Somebody yeah. asked a focus question and we just got a response. The answer is yes, you will have to reapply to the focus program next year. Um, at this time, that may change, but at this current time, if you decide to take a gap year, you'll have to reapply to focus. Great. Thank you for that follow up. Uh, let's see. How do I know if my immunization forms were received? I realize we don't have a student health representative. Good question. I was, just, I was just looking at that one. I, be, I believe the team from student health follows up with you if they have any questions. The other good place to know if the form has been received is checking your MyDuke checklist. If it has been received, you will eventually get a green check that indicates that they have received your forms. And if they haven't, then that check will stay um, a red X. So that's the best way to do it. I know that they check it. They don't check it daily. I think they check it a couple of times a week. Um, so after you submit it, maybe wait a couple of days, 48 or 72 hours, and then um, go back and see if your status in the system has changed. And there was another question about, um, is there an online, is there an online form for the uh, mandatory immunizations that can be filled out? Yes, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do it. I know that it is within the virtual blue book. So if you go to bluebook.duke.edu um, on the in this, the health, wellness, and safety section of there, there's a place where you can click and download the form to complete it. Um, you can send it back a couple of ways. You can mail it or you can fax it. I think they prefer for you to um, complete it, um, print it out, complete it, and then scan it and email it back to them. But all that information is in bluebook.duke.edu. All right, we have a question about tuition and fees. Will the cost of tuition and fees be split in two equal payments, one in the fall and one in the spring? Or is it monthly payments or what are, what are those options? Um, I'll answer that since we don't have the bursar's office here. So typically the, they're split into two payments. You have to pay in full for fall. Um, or pay in full for spring. There is an option to enroll in what's called the tuition management system, which allows um, families to choose to break it up into 10 payments. And there is more information regarding that on the Bursar website. And if I'm correct, they also send mailings about that as well. We have a question about voting. Uh, can we register to vote with our Duke address? So I'm not an expert on voting, but um, we, we were for a while um, producing a voter ID um, in, with, um, with the Polis um, Center and Duke card. And during that time, um, they were registering people to vote using their Duke address. So I believe that you can. And I know um, Duke Polis, so it's P-O-L-I-S. Um, if you search Duke Polis, it should come up. Um, I don't know the website off the top of my head, but they've been collecting a lot of really helpful information for um, 
students um, like the process of voting and like how to get an absentee ballot on campus and all of that. So that's a really helpful website and resource if that's um, something that you're curious about and want to get answers to. Um, again, and that's P actually just polis.duke.edu. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we answered that one. There's a question about, um, and again, we don't have admissions on here, but when my um, regular decision students received, receive acceptance packages, I know there were quite a few questions about um, receiving t-shirts that early decision students got. Um, I know the power of swag is, is important. Um, I'm, un, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if anyone else knows about that, um, but I would reach out directly to admissions about it. Um, Jordan, do you have anything else on that? Yeah, we, um, we're we not uh, sure about the packets. Uh, we're checking now to see, because those should have already been received, I would think. Um, so we'll, we'll check on that. Um, and then the piece about the swag and the t-shirts, I know it's something that admissions was really trying to do. They were really trying to work with our office because we're gonna be sending out the summer reading selection. Chanel Miller's Know My Name and could, uh, and could we combine those mailings? Um, we're not sure we're gonna be able to do that at this time. So we don't think those shirts are gonna be sent to students, but it is something that we're currently working on. Okay, let's see. If we're a National Merit Scholar or have another third party scholarship, how do we make sure that the scholarship money is factored into our payment for Duke? So if you are on financial aid, um, or even if you're not on financial aid, if you report it to the financial aid office, they will uh, uh, put that on your Duke Hub um, and it'll be seen as anticipated aid. It won't come off of what you owe from your account activity until they actually receive payment, but we can account for it so that you won't get a late fee or something like that. So report it to your financial aid counselor. All right, next question is, when does fall class registration begin and how are our AP scores factored in? And then someone else had asked a separate question about is there is there a deadline for submitting AP scores so we'll lump them together so registration will take place on July 14th and July 16th um, at some point I think it's July not July but June 10th you can start um, book bagging which is essentially adding classes and going into the registration process to add classes to your virtual book bag that you would like to take in the fall um, and then on the 14th or the 16th, you'll be able to register for those classes. Half the class gets to register on the 14th. The other half gets to register on the 16th. If you have the second date, so if you register on the 16th um, for the fall semester, you get to register on the first date for the spring semester. Um, so know that that's kind of how that process works. And then in terms of the AP scores, I think the AP office tries to get them to do by July 5th to try to help with some placement things. However, um, our team here at Duke recommends that you follow up with the registrar's office just to make sure that those scores have been received. Um, and, and whenever you're taking exams, I know there's a specific code to send the scores to Duke. So it's just, it's worth it to, you know, around early July, really after the July 4th weekend to give the registrar a call or an email to make sure that your specific scores have been received by the registrar. Thank you. Um... Is there a date that we have to accept our financial aid by? Uh, no, and actually you don't, any of the grant money, um, you don't have to accept and loans and work study will become available to um, accept later in June. Thank you. Um, when are we notified if we're well, when are we notified if we're taking the Writing 101 class uh, first semester or second semester? And I will say too, we are having future webinars, um, one with 
we'll have three different like academic advising and registration webinars, one with Trinity, one with Pratt, and then one with pre-health. So if you have um, specific questions about advising and registration, maybe hold off on those until um, those future webinars because we'll have academic deans um, we'll have academic deans as our panelists, so they might be able to give a little bit um, better information on those on those things. I would say, Casey, um, for the, and Casey's right, we're gonna have webinars to, to talk about that, tackle that specifically, but when you go into the system, um, when you go into Duke Hub, Duke Hub.Duke.edu to register, it'll give you an indication if you're supposed to register for writing 101 in the fall semester, it'll be a little green slip that tells you register for writing 101. And if you don't see that, then you don't have to register. But if you do see that, then you'll know to pick out a section for it. Awesome, thank you so much. Let's see, I wanna make sure I'm not, um, cause we have about nine minutes left. So I wanna make sure that we're getting to, getting to everybody's questions. Um, is there a deadline to set up Duke card? Um, anytime before the start of classes, but as soon as possible um, is recommended. Um, just to submit the photo to our website, dukecard.duke.edu. And once you do that, then you'll be able to download your mobile Duke card. So the sooner you do that, um, the sooner you'll be able to do that. But anytime before um, classes start, but as soon as possible is preferable. We have another technology question. So if classes are online in the fall, um, what kind of resources would we, oh, it moved away. What kind of resources would we need at home to complete virtual education? Or any sort of advice on that, on that front? I would say uh, whatever computer you would be using at school um, would work, um, probably a camera, um, that usually they're built in and um, yeah so I don't know John if you want to add anything to that but um, whatever laptop or computer you'd be bringing would be able to be used at home as well and all the recommended computers that we are offering this year uh, which is a total of about eight they all have cameras with them so that that's probably the most critical thing to have is an up-to-date computer with a camera this is a really good question. I just want to put a plug in here because students might be watching this later or families might watch this later. For any reason you have any sort of technology issues with access to computers, Wi-Fi hotspots, any of that stuff, please email our office, studentorientation at duke.edu. That's studentorientation, all one word, at duke.edu. Um, you know, I know people may be watching this later from public libraries or from other places. We don't want to assume that anybody has a technology capability. So please let us know so we can provide assistance and be helpful. The other thing I would add to that too is, um, you know, be sure to communicate with your with your faculty, with your professors. Um, they they've been really great, especially this past spring semester. So um, Duke switched to online learning following spring break, and so um, they've been really great about. Um, helping students with whatever needs they have. I know some are doing like asynchronous lectures versus doing all synchronous. So, um, you know, we want you to be successful and we want to help you in any way we can. And we can't do that if we don't know. So um, if something comes up or if um, you realize that um, that might be a barrier for you, communicate that with us, communicate that with your faculty, um, and we will do everything we can to make sure that it's a, a smooth process for you. There was a question about um, there was a question about vaccines. If the country where I live now doesn't have one of the required vaccines, um, what what should they do? Is there an opportunity for them to get it? It's a good question. It's a it's a student health question. So I I would check in with um, there's an email address immunizations at duke.edu, um, and the team over there will be able to help. I do know that um, you know if and when um, people come to campus, um, student health typically helps 
make sure students have those vaccines um, on whatever apparatus our, our move-in experience might be. Um, but I would check with them first at immunizations.duke.edu and they'll be able to help. Um, if someone was interested in purchasing a computer from Duke, is there, how would they do that? Are they able to do that online? Um, what would that look like? Um, you can go to uh, dukestores.duke.edu slash CPU store. And uh, from there, you'll see a banner where it says Duke students, faculty and staff, your personal computer purchases. You click on that banner. Uh, that site is, uh, there is some things on that site, right? There are some things on that site right now, but it is being updated and it should be updated by the end of the week with the most current offerings. Oh, and I will add, sorry about that is that we will ship to home. If you order uh, by the end of July, uh, uh, that gives us enough time to uh, ship to your home if you want to get your computer before coming here, whenever that is. Great. Um, next question is, are we allowed to pull money out of our Flux account or is it a one-way transaction? And then follow-up question is maybe a little insight into um, what a Flux account is for those that don't know. Um, Flux is, is money you can put on your um, Duke card account and you can use it for um, buying food um, at dining locations or vending. You can use it for laundry. Um, and you just um, put it on with a, you can do it online. You can add um, by debit card or, or credit card. And then you just need to have your Duke card or mobile Duke card to, um, to purchase things. It, you can use it at um, a Duke store to buy merchandise. You cannot pull money out of it. Um, you can only use it to purchase things. Um, so it kind of acts as cash that you can have on your card or or on your account. All right, we have a couple minutes left. I'm just, I wanna make sure that we're, we're getting all of these questions answered. These are great questions. Thank you so much for submitting them. Um, there are some advising and registration questions and given um, the panelists we have available and knowing future webinars, I'm gonna hold off on some of those questions for, um, those future webinars since they'll have um, the people who are more intimately involved in those things. Um, so I just wanna scan. If you have any last minute questions, feel free to throw them in right before we have to log off. Let's see. Uh, okay, um, how do we give access to our parents to pay our tuition? So I'll speak up to this. Um, you have to give uh, your parents proxy access. Um, and I'm not quite sure how um, it's on the Duke Hub to be able to give someone proxy access and then your parents can see your financial information without you know, having to go into your email and such. Um, there's also on the bursar's website, there's how to um, give your family proxy access as well. Yes, and, and I would it, to that. Oh, go ahead, Nicole, go ahead. <laughs> you, we're probably saying the same thing, but it's um, also located in the blue book under your student account within the living section. And I'll, I'm gonna try to find that question and, and paste the link in here for you. Um, but there's directions and it is, um, it is within um, Duke Hub, like many things. <laughs> awesome. I think, um, is there a bank on campus and what is it? 
as a, as a question. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if there's specific banks. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I know we have ATMs in different places on campus. So on East Campus, I think we have a Wells Fargo ATM, I want to say, in the marketplace. Uh, on West Campus, there's Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Duke Credit Union, um, ATM spread out throughout um, uh, the campus. Some are in the Bryan Center, some are in um, the, the Broadhead Center, um, and then there may be some in the hospital, but I don't spend a ton of time over there. But those would be the places and banks that I know are on campus. Awesome, and then um, last question we'll ask is, is there Wi-Fi everywhere on campus? Um, yeah, is there Wi-Fi everywhere on campus? I was gonna let Ann take that one. She's our Wi-Fi yeah. expert, but um, I, yes, there is Wi-Fi. Okay, go ahead. Yep, sorry. No, yes, um, there is Wi-Fi in all the residence halls and all the academic buildings and in a few places outside like the Bryan Center and the West Union, our Broadhead Center. Great. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for um, all of your questions and being really engaged in this. Um, we're hoping that this was helpful for you. Um, we do have some more webinars coming up that I know I alluded to. So let me pull up the schedule right now. The um, if you're not on the official Class of 2024 Facebook group page, um, please, please, um, Words. please be sure to join that um, that's where a lot of uh, the like us posting things will be um, there's currently like that's where you can find the lineup for the summer transition series this year it's also will be where we'll be posting the link to the recording of all of the webinars so if you wanted to watch them again um, and see all of our faces again or like get information that um, follow up on information that's the place to find it um, so our next webinar is, um, is June 3rd, that will be peer connection. So we have some student leaders from across campus in various leadership positions. Um, we'll have them so you can come and ask your peers, your, um, your fellow Blue, uh, Blue Devils, what their experience as students on campus is. Um, so peer connections is June 3rd. And then um, the following, the following webinars are um, June 16, June 17, and June 18, and that will be Trinity, Pratt, and Pre-Health Advising and Registration in that order. Um, and then the last webinar will be in July, and that will be Welcome to Duke. So that'll be um, our office, new student programs, um, International House, and yeah, it'll be it'll be us. We'll be um, answering any questions about um, your Duke onboarding experience and starting college life. So hopefully you can check those out. Um, we'll be like I said before, we'll be posting on the Facebook page with information for that and links to join and all of that. So um, thank you for joining. Thank you to all of the panelists for for being here and answering all these questions. I really, really appreciate you. And I'm sure um, the students do as well. So if you have anything else, feel free to follow up with us um, at studentorientation at duke.edu. Um, we're happy to help in whatever way we can. If you don't know where to start, that's a great place to start and we'll get you connected um, in the best way that we can. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>